hello, welcome everybody. Another episode of Sarcasm and Orgasm. I'm your host, Will, and I want to thank you for listening and tuning in. Now, on today's podcast, I have a very special guest. Um, I have listened to her from what she said and what she's telling me, but she is a really, really good one. She is in tune with not only herself, but also things that is going on with her and just how she, how things are. She is an intellectual, an intellectual woman. She's very bright, very intelligent. Um, and I've learned a lot when I came in contact with her through her podcast. So uh, it took a little uh, a little browning to say, hey, would you like to come on and be a guest on my podcast? And she uh, accepted, which I'm grateful for. So I would love, love to welcome my guest of the hour from Chronicles of a Virgo podcast, Miss Shakita Johnson. Thank you for that intro. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you so much for joining. I appreciate it. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you doing today? You know, I can't complain. I got to wake up, see the beautiful but boring sights of upstate New York. So I can't complain. Yeah, I mean, you know, my situation yesterday, I'm in Baltimore and we've been having some bad storms today. I mean, I think it rained on and off. But it was just like that dry humidity. But otherwise, mm-hmm. today's been a pretty just road show day. Yeah, I could say that too because I went out and did a nice walk, and it was about as dry as conversations at the bar. So I understand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. So I know about you, but please, for the listeners as well as the watchers, tell them a little about you and all things Chronicles of a Virgo. So, like Will said, my name is Shakita Johnson, and I am the host and creator of Chronicles of a Virgo podcast. Um, I am from, and I still live in Baltimore, Maryland. Be more Mm -hmm. (laughs) safe. So, yeah, like I work in the mental health and medical profession now. So, podcasting is like my little second hand thing that I've gotten into um, because it really just came up spirit a moment for me um but overall like my show is more of a personal and self-development platform um my intentions of the platform was to help other people grow and heal into their better versions of themselves because um that's what i'm doing and i'm continuing to do it on a daily basis because healing is something that we all need and it's very important so with my show uh talk and motivate other people to be better and i bring on different guests um so i just wrapped up my first season um about a week ago so i've just been kind of just trying to regroup and get my own mental health together and my physical health and stuff so i can come back with my second season and you know do some more networking and some more great shows yes yes uh seeing a couple of them i remember i think last time i had seen you is you did a uh, live on instagram um with i forget what her name is but i was I there for, mm-hmm. yes so i was there for the majority of you were talking it was a great episode so uh kudos to you shout out to her y'all did a phenomenal phenomenal job so thank you so much mm-hmm. yeah that and, was about a week ago i think we um we it was a mental health episode so we just did like a brief recap and just mm-hmm. offer like some you know some positive advice for anybody that may had been in need of it at that time so thank you for checking us out though yeah i did because i was i don't know why i was on instagram but reluctantly it came up in my feed and i went and checked it out and i was sitting there listening and you know making like notes for my next episodes of my show that i've been together so it was it was really good it helped me and then it even gave me the idea to do a nice live for the episode that i did that i did the other night which was great it was phenomenal um and it's almost like when you talk about mental health people people almost want to get that that shit look on their face like, like they don't want to talk about it it's almost taboo and i think it should be talked about in the same breath like people want to talk about sex if it's so open but people want to be so close about it and i think that is so wrong 
because you're almost stifling people to talk about their traumas that's going on with them so i say to you thank you so much for trying 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 to have an open candid conversation with people about their own mental health yeah and everything that you just described was exactly what i was prior to me getting to the point of being so open and honest because it takes honesty to really dive into your mental health because you are focusing on yourself you're turning that mirror around and you are taking accountability for different aspects of life that you may not have thought that you played a part in and just a part in just like moving forward right so Mm -hmm. yeah like one of the you know cliche things from a black um growing up in a black household is you know the things that happen in this house stay in this house yes and i feel like with that type of stigma a lot of people are closed off from speaking so me working in the mental health like i became more open with talking about my own struggles and helping people like that's all i've known to do is help everybody else and didn't realize that i was neglecting myself in so many ways Mm -hmm. so yeah as long as i have a voice you know that's what i'm going to do be out here encouraging and motivating people to you know seek help if they need it and do it like unapologetically and not worry about the stigma that's placed around it or not worry about getting validation from anybody else you know yes and it it's it's hard and it's almost like we as the black people we're open about everything because it's like everything happens to us that's one thing that we don't really want to talk about so openly and so honestly is our own mental health our own struggles our own reason as to why we can't go to the next person say i'm this way because of that because it's almost like we're we're going to get shunned away it's like oh boy you playing nobody want to hear that go somewhere with that and it's like we continuously hear that over and over again so as we begin to develop into our adulthood we hold that we we suppress that energy to where we just never let it come out because we don't know um who is willing to hear you know these these who's willing to hear these scars that we carry that we so deeply try to cover up with everything else that we got going on yeah and like you said one thing that people deal with is who's going to be not only willing to listen but who's going to be able to um not necessarily protect me but just handle me with care right Mm -hmm. because if i'm coming to you and i'm already vulnerable in itself so me having to seek help or just be able to get to a space of being able to vent that's a big thing for a lot of people and it really does take putting your pride aside because us black folk we're very prideful we so feel like people, you know, people are going to judge us. People are going to um, project their opinions and perspectives onto us. And a lot of people, it closes us off. And I'm saying us because I still deal with that sometimes too. But what I realize is the more that I continue to speak on like my personal struggles or help other people be able to get to a point of communicating it is very deliberating you know you feel like there's something lifted off of your shoulder and another thing with discussing mental health why i think it's a lot difficult for people is because let's be real a lot of us have been through a lot of trauma a lot of places we don't want to relive again a lot of experiences that really have broke us and we may have stifled through those things however we felt was good at that time so having to go back and address the things that were done to us or people that hurt us it makes us feel small in some sense and it's just like okay no i don't want to go back to that point but you know if you conjure up the strength too you'll realize like okay even though i'm going back to these hurtful things and moments that may have caused me a lot of pain and trauma once I'm talking these things out and working through them, it puts you in a better, you know, peaceful space in life. Well, that's what I get from it. That's what I have gotten from it. And a lot of people that I know that are in therapy and things like that now, that's what, you know, they're working their way through now and getting towards. Yeah, uh, it, it, therapy can be very healing, it can be very therapeutic. It can be eye opening. And even through my own traumas that I, had I learned that you know we hold and we suppress on a lot of things that we never know is there until we actually open up the book you know 
pull back the scabs and really look at the scars that we have for our own self internally. So therapy is very rewarding if you let it be. Like you have to let therapy work. You just can't go in there, start talking and think, oh yeah, I feel better after one session. No, you need at least two or three to really start digging deep. At least that's what I believe. Most definitely. And you have to like find the person that's for you. Like mm -hmm. kind of like when you're dating, right? Some of us, some people are just very free spirited. They're, they date around until they find that person that really checks all their boxes. When it comes to therapy. There's nobody out here. <laughs> <Nobody. laughs> but like with therapy, it's the same way. You know, a lot of people are very afraid to go tell people their deepest, darkest fears and secrets and stuff. And with therapy, you find you have to shop around till you find the right person and i mean sometimes it'll take you about two or three people but at least you did the work to find a person that's for you i mean i agree but then i also disagree because i remember when i went to my first therapist she was a white lady and like i said on the episode i did she didn't understand nothing i was going through she was just there i felt like she was just collecting that check for my insurance just because <laughs> But but then when I really started to think like this hoe ain't helping me like I need somebody else and I don't mean to be so candid about it but if we're gonna be real let's be real it's like if we're going to deal with you know mental health from a therapist let's deal with it with either a, a black man or a black woman one of the two because it's almost like not only can they acknowledge but they can also really help you sift through the good and the bad a white person is not going to do that just to be like, okay i understand yeah 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 and it's almost like those cartoons you see them sitting there drawing and doodling as if they're not really doing nothing <laughs> so it's like why the hell do i even bother but then when you really start to get together and really start to think about it, it's like you want someone you can really confide in and have that that level of like you said vulnerability and comfortability with to where you're almost you're allowing yourself to talk to this person like if there's somebody you actually know and that's a feeling that i would like to have when you know i had my therapist when i went to her she was like yeah well we could talk about eating everything but you have to talk i'm just here I'm just here to help you, but I can't help you if you're not going to help yourself. And I almost like that level of honesty because it says that we can work together when you feel like doing it. Sort of mm -hmm. like a relationship, but we all know that never <laughs> happens that way. It really don't. So. I mean, hey, things happen how you put your mind to it. So if you go into things thinking it's not going to work, it's not going to be beneficial to your needs and check those boxes off, then that's exactly what it's going to be because that is the perspective you went into it with, right? right. I mean, I say that now, a couple of years ago, I wasn't thinking that way at all. I was thinking the same things that you were thinking, whether it was dealing with people, a dating relationship, therapist, or whatever. When it comes to having the right therapist, I have been through numerous therapists, black, white, Puerto Rican, Latina, like you name it, not men. I just had a i don't know what it was i just didn't have the a good vibe about going to a men therapist like i felt like as a woman i needed someone that was going to be able to relate to me you know on a woman type of thing and Sounds especially like no like i don't mean to be <laughs> I, I don't mean to sound that way but like the, okay let me say it this way the things that i need i'm messing with you I'm like no because I, I, I don't want nobody to get offended or nothing the things that i needed to work on like my like traumas and stuff i didn't feel comfortable talking about those things with a man right mm -hmm. what i will say is now um my therapist now she is not black she's not actually i had a black therapist i've been seeing her uh i started seeing her back in 2017 and i just stopped seeing her uh the beginning of uh 2021 and it wasn't that she was bad for me but like she did not challenge me in ways that I needed to be challenged. Mm -hmm. And she's good. Like, I would recommend her to friends and different things like that. But for me, what the type of therapy that I needed, because let's be there are different types of therapy. Um, she just wasn't, she wasn't giving it. And I did a lot of research. And of course, I was like, I need another black therapist. But um, I did hear your last uh, episode y'all did about mental health. And you made a very um interesting point that when you were seeing 
um, a white, I guess, a psychiatrist and you were on meds and stuff, you felt like they were just giving you a whole bunch of meds yeah. and not really caring if it like really worked. Mm -hmm. So when I was going to a, my black therapist and I was seeing a black psychiatrist, that is what I was getting. But now that I'm seeing like a white therapist and I'm not on any medication or anything, but that is not the first thing that we resort to when Shakita is being triggered or when Shakita is going through different things. Like we, my treatment has been amazing. Like these last couple, almost a year, I started seeing her September of last year. So we cycle through so much and I have a toolbox of different resources opposed to my only resource being a pill or pills mm -hmm. you know like she's helping me meditate more and we do things more on a holistic side with an approach that if something else was to come up of course like we will take other you know uh options but for me that's just not what i want for myself and like yeah. you said i did challenge her because i'm like okay i need to see where your mind is and can you re i know you cannot relate to me as a black woman but as long as you meet me half, like at least halfway, right? And like, I mean, she shocked me as far as just like her awareness, you know, for the black community and people of color. And she explained to me why she makes it a, a goal in her life to continue to educate herself about our culture and mm -hmm. other cultures. And she, you know, she shared some things with me and that just made me more comfortable, you know? Yeah, I heard that. and when my therapist said and, and it it was almost within the first conversation of her and i having she was like yeah well i think we should put you on meds and at the time i'm thinking okay well that's fine maybe it's part of the treatment plan but then as i'm progressing in the treatment plan that i'm going i'm starting to like i said feel less of myself because you know the meds they have me on well butrin which is I yeah. really think it's a weight loss pill. I don't even think it has nothing to do with your mental, whether you have an imbalance or not. That is a fucking weight <laughs> loss pill because I lost so mm -hmm. much weight. It was like, I wish I could go back to that weight. Not Man. that it's always a bad thing. <laughs> no, it's not. But still, like, it's just, we we almost live in a society to where we're over medicated but we're under under their therapy eyes if that's <laughs> if that's the word how i use it right but yeah we're they're pushing so many meds on us to where they're not really finding out the problem finding out the issue because nobody wants to talk and that's really crippling it's really demoralizing to the spirit because someone just really needs to talk and that's it because we have so much trauma and triggers going on to where why are you just pushing meds on my throat and just sending me out the door? Like, you just want to go to the shore and say, hey, give me all your money. I don't care about this fucker. I really don't. <laughs> so. Yeah, and that's the unfortunate part. And, like, yeah, people do need to talk. So, and I had to learn this when it came to therapy, too, because I'm going to go, you know, weekly or bi weekly. However, I decided that I needed to go. And I'm saying all this stuff, I'm talking, but I need direction. I need you to help me stifle through these emotions and things. But I also had to realize that this is a relationship. Like we're in a relationship now, right? So I'm coming to you weekly and I'm telling you everything. And you know what my, like I have these triggers and I keep cycling back to the old things. How am I supposed to get forward? You know, so that means you have to help help me move along but then i also have to implement more healthy boundaries in my life and more healthy resources that i can move forward and for me i mean it was i mean hey i'm gonna be real because i'm always <laughs> i wouldn't be me if i wasn't real like i was always resulting back to negative stuff and blaming it on everybody else like nobody shakita never did nothing Nice. And she really got passive aggressive vibes. Like, you know, you know, every everybody did everything to me. Everything was always happening to me. I never took no part in it. You know, I would get riled up, get my friends riled up, and we would just be like, it's on site. Until I had to be sit down. It, it takes sometimes it takes one situation to knock you all the way down on your face for you to mm -hmm. realize like all right, something has to happen. And unfortunately for me, that is what happened. That's what happened. Wow. Wow. 
So uh, let's let's transition a little bit because this is probably be all day with you all day. So <laughs> <laughs> as as far as podcasting goes, like how did you get into it? How did you find out about it to where now you run the most successful wilderness podcast ever? Well, thank you very much. We're going to speak that in existence. Um, we are. I just said it. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, honestly, like, when I started, like, my own personal healing journey back in 2019, I started listening to Therapy for Black Girls. And it was a couple other shows that I had, had found. And I just started listening to these shows and things. And I started a blog because I like mm-hmm. to write. And I would journal and stuff. But I just started blogging my thoughts. And, you know, I started getting a little crowd and different things so i just continued to do that and within that i was like i want to put out a podcast but my confidence was not where it is now i didn't think that no one was going to want to hear the things that i had to say i didn't know anything about it besides the fact that i listened to these other successful speakers authors just different people and back in january of this year um i was on clubhouse and i literally like heard this song playing on Clubhouse, this guy and it was like jay-z encore and for some reason that gave me this weird stamina right because i was i had some stuff going on at that particular time and i just started it and when i started it i had no idea it was going to be a as demanding (laughs) as it could be you know despite me trying to like maintain my own personal life gym life relationships and work you know, I just knew that I wanted to do it. I had to figure it out. And like, yeah, I just started like doing research. I started finding, you know, good, group, well, some good groups <laughs> and different things on social media. And I've met some really nice people, including yourself, you know, that I learned from whether y'all know it or not. But I feel like we, t- we all take something from each other. Yeah. And um, I felt like I was like, okay, I'm really stepping into my purpose. You know, I've been trying mm-hmm. to find who Shakita really is, and I knew what the theme of my podcast was. So I just continued to just go with it. Wow. And so, how rewarding has it been with you through the people that you come in contact with? Like, what is something that you know now that you wish you learned back when you first started? Hmm. Um, I wish that I had maybe the confidence that now that I have back then, I wish I had like the confidence because I (laughs) like, I feel like a lot of times we really don't know our true power or we don't believe in our true capability. And I knew that, okay, I would get on, you know, my phone, the microphone, I would record episodes and put things out, but I really didn't know if the message was getting across to people you know i'm like well damn i shot my, my, my myself sometime my family my friends like don't just tell me stuff to be nice you know i needed to mm-hmm. hear it from other people and then i just start having people like email me people in my dms and i'm like okay they are really listening like people are really taking heed on what i'm saying so i'm like okay you know i'm, I'm doing my job not job but you know I'm fulfilling my purpose and that, those type of things make me feel more fulfilled, you know, because yeah, yes. like, let's be real. We can listen to stuff sometimes and it does not resonate with us, but it just meant something to me that someone was resonating with the things that I had to say or the guests that I was bringing on telling their stories or just talking with me. Absolutely. And I can even say for me, um, it's been kind of tough because it's almost like I just straight wanted to do straight one. So all I want to do is just, you know, write my scripts, edit them, record them, and just put them out. And I remember I was, I forget which group that I was in. I was talking to somebody who was like, well, you have something here, but you just need more than the 15, 20 minutes. You need guests. And I'm thinking, I really don't want to do that. I don't want to talk to people because I'm comfortable with it just being me. Right. But I, it's almost like I found that balance now. Like I enjoy, you know, talking to people such as yourself and then still doing my solos. And then now it's like now having panels of people hearing different ones every so often. It's like, well, 
people have things to say just like you on so many different levels that you just don't know you just gotta put yourself out there and that's what i'm learning putting yourself out there in spaces that might be uncomfortable but once you do it enough time it's like you can do it any anywhere with no type of uh hesitation so i understand that completely i do um because i'm not going to say podcast is easy it can be but it's hard to a certain level because you have to do so many things all in one time for it to be so great in the way you want it to be because it's a representation of you oh my gosh yes and like you said um the whole thing was like you just being comfortable in your space and doing your recordings and shows by yourself i was the same way you know i would get people reaching out saying hey if you need guests i'll come on i'm like well how do you do that <laughs> and then my whole biggest thing i'm serious i didn't know how none of this stuff i didn't either i understand you know? trust me and i didn't want to be that one person in some of these groups that asked of the could they probably be like seriously you got a podcast and you don't know this stuff so i was like wait and so people ask certain questions but when um uh, i just that's how i learned like i really did and then shout out to um podcasting for the culture um angel and nikki like they yep. put their own you know mm-hmm. their the group together and honestly i've connected with most of the people that i know and network with in that group uh, compared to like all these other groups it's just like more of like a personable you're you're in there yes. so you know more person a personable space but and my biggest thing was i didn't want to show my face I mean, I just had so I don't know. Like I was like nervous, like because when I'm behind the mic and you can't see me, you can't see what I'm doing. Like you don't know if I'm messing up or whatever. But being on camera showing my face, it just gives it a different feel. And I don't know, like I just had a big big nerves about it until someone hit me up, like, hey, can you come do my YouTube show? And I'm like, oh my goodness. (laughs) (laughs) And I didn't. (laughs) And and then after that, someone was like, "Hey, can you go live with me on Instagram and we talk?" I'm like, "Okay." And I did it. And after that, things I just started to get more comfortable, you know. So we'll see what happens with that, though. Yeah, I, I remember when I did my first live, I was nervous as hell, and <laughs> it it was nice because the people that I had on. Anybody that I do lives with, I have to do a one-on-one with you first. That way I have a good feel. I know who I'm getting into. I just don't like just throwing you to the wolves because people say, oh, I'm looking for four or five guests and you don't know what they're capable of. Like people are crazy out here. (laughs) And then if you go listen to their podcast, they're even more eccentric. So I try to almost like mitigate that and break that up because I want to make sure that you fit with the people that I'm putting you with and it's a nice mixture. I don't like having that oil and vinegar type of podcast. I really don't like, I try to be a perfectionist as much as I possibly can and then have a nice controlled environment. So I don't need no one popping off on each other and then just the, the <laughs> shit goes, goes to hell. But no, that's, that's that. important. That is important, you know, and like I have, I started doing like these little things called candid conversations and I wanted to do them every month. Just bring on friends of mine, can a conversation with friends, friends of mine and different people I, I have met. And um, I don't like, I, I have meshed other people with my friend circle, right? Because I know my friends, right? Mm-hmm. And I know, I, I just know my friends and they're really good on filling people out and just being respectful. And one thing that I, one thing that I always tell people even when I do my individual episodes, we all have an opinion. All of our opinions and feelings is our value are are valuable and they should be valued. However, everybody don't value other people's opinions. I will never argue with a person about your opinion, your beliefs, but something that's factual and stats, you know, like that have receipts about that can be proven, like I will. So it's a difference. Like and I never want anybody to feel like they listen to something that I say or a guest say and they may disagree and think that I'll get mad like that is your opinion you know mm-hmm. I'm gonna always promote you to be better and to be positive in your best self but if you disagree with something that I say I'm perfectly fine with that and if, if you want to have a discussion that's cool so like you said it's important to like not mix those like oil and vinegar I think that's what you said together mm-hmm. however sometimes I realize it can also make room and open up the door for more 
Oh, go ahead. I'm oh, good. I just thought. I just thought <laughs> it, something. That's all. It can make it can make room for more like engagement and conversation because I had a couple of my candid conversations. It didn't get feisty, but it just was like, okay, I feel like I'm being attacked right now, like unconsciously, mm-hmm. <laughs> and you know. But it is what it is. Yes, it is what it is, and I agree with you. And I say this as a rebuttal: like, there is nothing wrong with be with bringing people who are different, but I don't want them to be so different to where they become volatile, and then it almost puts a damper on what you're trying to do. Because there's nothing wrong with can- candid conversations. There's nothing wrong with people who bring different opinions, but sometimes those opinions have might have some type of repressed hurt feelings. So if you push the wrong button, in that person whether they be man or woman is going to not only go off on you but the whole panel is entirely and then it just brings down the mood and we don't need mood killers we don't we got enough going on in this world to where people are already on edge and we just try to like you and i have a nice space to where people could just have a good time be able to speak what they want to and then we all learn from someone so there are these volatile guests out here that just mean you no good <laughs> like i've had a few of them myself that i'll never forget this one interview i did with this one guy and it's still it, <laughs> you can watch all you want i don't give a damn i'm gonna say it but i won't say his name i always do pre-screens i have to it's just it's better that way because i know what i'm dealing with when i get involved to you whether we do a soul a one-on-one or we do a panel and he was just so short one worded and i'm talking to you as if well i checked out your stuff you got a good following every day i'm just trying to network with you build with you make those relationships and it just seems like he wasn't interested and i'm thinking myself well why did you answer my post say okay let's work for you to just act like oh whatever i'm just going to show up when that's not even the case but i always try to be respectful say okay no problem i'll get back to you with you know my link so you could do it and never talk to him again and then i see him get on one podcast and he jump on it and he's just like life of the party bundle of energy so that's what i don't like about some of these podcasters is they make it seem like they're one way when they're really another another when they're not me you see me this is how i am this is how i am with everybody i always give you my 100 percent because i will want the same energy in return and that's almost the problem with podcasting it's like there's a level of redundancy that people keep placating over and over again to where it's almost crippling to the spirit because you don't know what you're getting from somebody you really don't hmm. Yeah, I haven't um, really run into any of those, (laughs) and I really hope not to. I mean, I feel like when you let people in, and this is just speaking of people in general, when you meet people in one environment and you try to create a relationship or friendship out of that, you invite them into your life. And what I think people need to be open-minded is like people live life and have life experiences and situations that go on so one day you may see me and i may be happy go lucky and the next day i may not be responsive or want to be bothered but that doesn't make you know anybody a bad person so you just have to be um very conscious and protective of who you invite into your space including your podcast because this is your brand you know like you said it's representation of you and even though you can't control your guests and stuff, when they're on your platform, they kind of are a representation of you. And mm-hmm. whatever the message is and dialogue that you're trying to give off to your listeners, you know? Yeah. So when I, I don't run a scripted show, anybody that's ever been on will tell you that I don't. I don't, I mean, to an extent, I see why people do it. I don't. I will have a topic and I will have topic um points and my guests they are sent this information before they come on if they have any pushback when adding anything they have the space to do that you know overall the show is about them and i want to make them as comfortable as ever because i can be wild and chaotic whatever and you because i'm trying to actually you get wild right now so <laughs> let's, let's go <laughs> listen i'm listening but am i gonna watch at the same time that's what i want to know <laughs> <laughs> but no, so listen, you're gonna make me lose my train of thought. But what I'm but you understand what I'm saying? Like you wanna yeah, create just... comfortability 
but still get, have fun get the message across you know all that stuff so within doing that I don't do the pre-screening. I mean, everyone that I have had on, whether I knew them on a personal level or I connected with them, listened to their shows, we have conversated maybe like five to ten minutes before recording, and mm-hmm. then we just just let things roll. Hey, that's on you. Everybody's process is different. My works is easier for me. I send them the link. I talk to them first. Then we make the podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's okay with me because it works. And it's, for me, it's almost like having a level of professionalism because not only am I showing you I'm accountable, I want you to be accountable too. And if you don't show up, then I just move on. It just says that you didn't want to do it. Um, and then I always like to do a nice little follow-up just to see what their thoughts were after everything happened. Um, but it just, it shows that, you know, you can be serious about this, but still have fun with it. And that's, I think that's the line that people miss is like, no one wants to, no one wants to be fun about it. No one wants to have a good time. Everybody's like, oh, you got to do mine. You got to listen to my stuff. And you got to follow me. Like, whoa, whoa, bro. Let's, let's talk first. And now I want to do all that, but I hear you. And you know, everybody's process is different. So, but it's just how you are, Miss Johnson. So. <laughs> now let me ask you a question though, because you okay, you kind of like you like made a point, and I want your opinion on it. So, what is your opinion about people that like schedule to do a show with someone, right? And something comes up, like my situation, things that you cannot control. Mm-hmm. And the person has to like back out or reschedule. Like, how do you? And I'm asking you, even though I already know, but like, how do you look at that situation or that person? I look at it as both situation and person. If you let someone know what's going on, say, and we'll just say, for instance, like you were supposed to be on, you know, the mental health episode that I have, and you was telling me, well, I don't know if I can make it. Things are going on, and I was like, okay, no problem. I get that. You're telling me ahead of time. But if you're going to wait almost 10, 15 minutes before showing, before we start recording, and you don't say two words, not nothing, and I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, and then it's like, whatever, then you start thinking, okay, well, then this person's on bullshit. So, yeah. but it, it's a different thing when you let someone know ahead of time, even a half an hour, like, I might be late, I might not make it, I just, some, there are things going on, like, you ain't gotta tell everybody everything, but just let them know something, it's just a level of professionalism, and that's okay, that just shows that you're serious about it, you want to come, but you might not be able to, so, it's just having... And this is a huge thing amongst everybody, having that line of communication and telling someone something, whether it's through phone, text, email, whatever it might be. I mean, we all can hit someone up and let them know something and right. whatever it might be. So yeah, it's just, it opinion, really depends on the person, honestly. And like for my like like my situation, like you mentioned, I was not about to go live in the dark. OK, storming, thundering. <laughs> Like all this, everyone would have been like, "Is she okay?" So like something like that, like is I get it. But like you said, I've seen people posting groups before where like people like drop out of shows or just they don't confirm five, ten, mm-hmm. fifteen minutes before, and I'm just like, "Damn!" Like has it? Been, you know, it makes you just wonder how everyone goes forward handling things. Like, thankfully, I never had that experience. But you know, I think people considering do need to be understanding that life happens sometimes you know and hey life happens people got kids people get sick people power go out from storms you know so it is what it is it it is but it's just it's being honest with yourself like if you're really serious about being a guest on someone that you that you signed up for it's not like I hit you up, even if I did, and you say, hey, Will, I want to be a guest. I'd be like, okay, okay, that's fine. Pick a day and a time, and we'll do it. And you'd be like, cool. And you went out your way to pick the day that was good for you, and then you just don't show up. It's like you really wasted your own time by setting time aside to do it. So, And that's the one thing I don't think people understand is like, 
you do this you make you make um you make time for what you want and then the things you don't want you just be like fuck it i don't care i'll do whatever and so it's then like okay well i'll never have you back and then you will have the nerve and the audacity to say hey you think we can redo that again i'd be like hell no it's not happening like you gotta be out your rabbit ass mind and think i'm gonna set myself up again for you to come back and say okay i'm serious let's try this again and then you pull the same stuff no no i might be born in the day but i was born yesterday it's not happening it's, it's just happening. like it's just like a relationship though right well kind of like a relationship like oh, if no, they w- yeah you know if they wanted to they would and if they don't that is a personal choice that they are making not to do something you know that's how i look at it even though like with podcasts and guests like of course we're not in a relationship but we're making we're committing to this together you know mm-hmm. and if they wanted to they would and she was like uh fool me once shame on uh you fool me twice that's shame on me like yeah. i give you two times and you still doing the same thing you might not even make it to the second chance so <laughs> i don't even want to give you one time because there's this like 50 50 chance that you just go to screw me in its entirety i'm like okay i don't know if i can do this but i still try to give you the benefit of the doubt and i'm just saying as for instance like your situation i completely understood just like i told you if you can make it fine if you can't that's fine too the more important issue is just your safety because i didn't want you sitting there you be talking recorded and they say you know you get shocked and your power (laughs) i feel responsible (laughs) yes or just like the thunder oh it was just a mess it thundering and lightning and everybody would have been looking at the screen like what is going on (laughs) But yes, it always is a good feeling that you, you know, to to have like-minded conversations with people. Not only that, people would just be understanding, you know, that's like very, I don't know, you do that for me, just have compassion of like my situation or just for people, like that's a check in my book. Because that lets me know that like, you may just be a good person. Mm-hmm. I may want to continue working with you. I know, right? And it's hard to find good, compassionate, thought people because everybody's just like they have a hidden motive, some type of hidden agenda, and that you don't know. And even when you try to put your put yourself amongst the goodness of the good, you still have that little bit of self doubt. Like, mm, I don't know. I'm still, you know, going to like <laughs> be on my p's and q's, but. You know, you always want to give someone, like I said, the benefit of the doubt. And, you know, I I care enough to, like, still ask questions like, are you okay? Like, I had checked on you to make sure you were okay, everything was good. But I still want you to know that, you know, are we still going to do a podcast? Because I was still interested with still sitting down and talking with you because, you know, it's this is like what we're trying to do so it's more like still having compassion because at the end of the day you're a person so am i and you just you have to try to be you have to try to position yourself in a way it's like i'm good no matter what all i care about is someone being okay when things are happening period (laughs) absolutely uh so a few more things before i get you out of here um um has there like when it comes to your format and you doing podcasts wh- was there something that you started doing in the beginning to where you change now or have you had the same recording format when it comes to you speaking with guests and you picking your topics and so forth because i know i've changed my format a whole lot of times a whole bunch um i try to keep things um, consistent and as structured as I could. However, for me, there is a difference when working with someone opposed to by myself, right? Mm-hmm. So, like, you know, you can record your, well, you do YouTube, but for a person that started off just doing um, the audio, you can record from your phone. Like, it's real simple. No, it's not. It's not. It's well, not. I, I started. Did- Wait a minute, I started off recording from my phone, and let me tell you, that was the absolute worst experience ever. Ever. You must have an Obama phone. (laughs) No, I I got an iPhone. I got an iPhone. But (laughs) at the time, you know, I started with Anchor, and I don't mean to overtake you, Mm, but this is, it's always funny because 
when my brother told me about Anchor, about recording a podcast, I was like, cool, I can do it anywhere. And I remember I started recording at work because I travel for work to different hospitals. And I was sitting in the break room recording and I recorded a 20 minute episode, 20 minutes, never forget it. And then when I got back to my hotel room, I'm listening to it and I couldn't hear it, not nothing, nothing. Oh. Yes, and, and I can remember, I'm sitting here like this, holding it to my phone. And you know what happened? I never press record. Never press oh record. Oh my God. <laughs> so, oh my God. so that good ass topic that I did, I was like, where the hell did it go? And then I couldn't even remember because I came up with a whole new one. And then that's where it started to where my first episode I ever did was stupid people. And then it just went from there. So yes, seriously, that today that is my best episode when it comes from an overall standpoint of just straight ranting about people and their complete, utterly stupidity. So yeah. Yeah. Um, I have thank goodness I haven't had any um problems recording on Anchor. Um I also used to use Podbean sometime to do um my recordings because they have a very good audio system on their app like it's a it's amazing um you can and you can do a lot from their app like you can go live do live shows and you can get tips and a whole bunch of stuff but anyway so like yeah it, it's it's definitely decent like i will say that you it's just you gotta watch your space that's the only thing with them like if you go over your space, it will cut your episode. I had done, I did have that happen. I was recording and I didn't realize it until the upload that it cut the last ending piece of my episode out, but it had to do with space. But otherwise, when I start doing things, like when I do my guests, I do things through Zoom. Mm -hmm. So I had to learn all, you know, like, that and that learn and downloading and uploading and different things because I'm I'm tech savvy but not that tech savvy. I didn't know all that stuff. So for the most part I tried to keep everything structured and consistent. Although the more people I have met, I've learned different things and picked up different ideas from them. So I tried to maneuver things um, around a little bit. As far as my topics go, yes, yeah, some of my topics do just come off the top of my head at times. Um, but for me, because I'm a person that overthinks a lot and I'm, I try not to be such a perfectionist. It's the Virgo in me, honestly. Yes, it is. <laughs> it is the Virgo in me. Um, I had to really like get a notebook. I had to get and just write, start writing things and like be very, I'm very specific about how I want things carried out. And, um, yeah, so I just started writing down different topics and things that I wanted to ha uh, do discussions about. Even now, like my friends and different guests that I want to have on for like my upcoming next season and stuff with my candid conversations, people send me stuff all the time. I'm like, okay, hold on to this. Like people want to dive into a whole bunch of different topics. People want me to speak on a lot of stuff. So I try to hold on to it so I won't forget it trying to remember. Um, mm -hmm. One thing I will say is I've learned and see a lot of people talk about rebranding not being a bad thing um so i'm definitely open to suggestions moving towards like my second season which is not coming anytime soon <laughs> after this will be after my birthday but um i'm open to like suggestions and i'm always open to criticism and opinions because i just feel like those things just make me better you know true and i know for me i when i started on anchor I was good um and then like i said i had that conversation with the person telling i need to get uh guests so i was like okay where did i get guests from i don't know where to go so i started like researching and then i remember my first guest she's my very first one her name is meryl kim Lowe. i think i said her name out shout out to her she is from the west coast from san diego she was my first guest we had a great conversation um and then it just spiraled from there but the bad thing about that was I was using an interface called Riverside and Riverside absolutely sucks. I okay. hate it. I, <laughs> thank you. Someone understands. I'll never forget. I It was Meryl and then I did another episode with Toy or Sip Talk with Toy and B. Shout out to them, two of my favorite ladies. We did an episode. It was great. Great mm -hmm. conversation. And the problem with that was 
B, her 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 audio and video downloaded instantly. Mm-hmm. Toy, if I go back to it right now, it is still at forty nine percent, and we recorded that back in April. Oh my goodness! Yes, yes. So I was still was using it, you know, trying, and I was always having problems because then when I would download the audio and then bring it over to Anchor so I can put it together. I would like I would get chopped versions. It was like I would have to download one part, then get the other, listen to it, splice it back together so it would run, and then try to do that. I was like, I can't do this. And then I got on one podcast, uh, CL from Pussy Talks, and she told me about. Yes, that's the name of her. Yeah, it is. I think I've seen. I think I've. Yeah, seen yeah, it. she she's great. She's mm-hmm. very very intimate. I love her. Um, she told me about Streamer, which we're on now, and I've never had a problem with it. Never. Uh, I tried Zoom, but it's like you want me to keep it under forty minutes, but then you want me to pay like forty dollars. No, bro, that that that's a no go. I like my yeah. nice thirty dollars a month. I can have up to ten people here. I can put any and everything I want. With with no problem, no bandwidth. Well, no extra bandwidth. So yeah, I've uh, I've had my experiences when it's come to these interfaces. And then there's been other ones people told me about, but this is the one I've been most comfortable with because it's nice and easy, especially from you know like a guest perspective, to where you can just punch it in. It'll take you straight through, mm-hmm. and you have no problems. There's nothing that you need to download. Riverside. I remember I did an interview with one person. And it was like, well, it's telling me to download. I'm like, well, download it then. What what you want me to do? I can't I can't and talk to you till you download the software if necessary. So it's just I've had my ups and downs, but I hate Riverside. Absolutely hate it. I still get on every once in a while to see if that's fully download. Nope. Still at forty percent. Still at I did I did another I did this girl show on Riverside and um I had the app, but it was like soon as she, I guess like I entered the room, it was a five second countdown or something like mm-hmm. that. Yep. It, that was a very, I still have yet to this day to get a copy of that episode. <laughs> like, I don't, <laughs> like the, I don't, you know, I think, I don't know what happened to the per, the girl. Like, I'm really curious now. Like, now that I think about it, but like, it was just like, she's like, hey, it's starting in five seconds. I'm like, oh my gosh, like, we didn't review anything. Like, there was not a lot of communication. I knew what the topic was, but like, and I just felt like I was running. It was real weird, but that whole system was just like jinky as I don't know what. So, ever since then, I was like, yeah, it's not going to work for me. Zoom, I do know it cuts you off in 45 minutes. I have a paid account. So I don't even, you know, it doesn't matter. But I have been, when they first decided on cutting it at 45 minutes, I had been, um, I had been on someone's show and they did not know. And it cut us off at 45. So we had to like run it back. But he was right. able to like, you know, you can like, he when he edited it, he meshed it together or whatever. Yeah. See, I don't edit. I don't edit my shows. No, and there's some edits that I don't do, like, there would be if like it was really good only thing i need to really do for edit just put the beginning and the ending intro mm-hmm. and that's it there's no editing in between because if it's a good conversation straight through why do you need to really mess it up when it was a nice you know great transition between everything but there are just there's some interviews i did to where i have to do a lot of doctoring because I've had some boring ones. I really have. So that's why I have to put like those funny memes in there just to keep the attention going. Like, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I've been I, I be seeing your post. I've been like, oh. And it's like the memes that you use, it, it flows in with the conversation. Like, it's mm-hmm. so funny. So shout out to you because I've been seeing you in the groups. Like, you do really good job, like, trying to network and connect with people. Like, just making people, like, hey, drop your, you know, who wants to come on or talk about mm-hmm. this and drop your link. So, like, shout out, like, definitely keep doing your thing because, I don't know, it brought me out of my little, like, nest because I'm like, I'm not dropping no more links. <laughs> I'm not doing, you know, too many more shows. But I was like, what the hell? What 
what you know what what bad can happen so and you know what i and i see that and i think about it and i look <laughs> back at it and it's just like you don't see anybody else doing anything like you just pick a random day like it's network tuesday drop your links uh youtube ig or uh, whatever it might be and then it'll be up for three days and you'll see nobody else doing that so it's almost like no one is even taking none of the initiatives to just try to get yourself out there and then i do that because i was just i was at work one day it was a boring day we had nothing going on over i'm just like okay let's see if i can get some followers and i did but then again i didn't because it's almost like you follow somebody then they'll follow you but then they'll drop their followers like what the hell was that for why even bother doing that but i still like it because you never know who you're going to interact with you might come across the same people but there might be different people that you can go and check out so i just i like to try to get as many things going in different lanes because you just never know what you're going to come across and then here we are because me and you interacted and so the rest is history yes and i'm it's just it's trial and error yep you know i don't i don't really believe in like giving up at things you know sometimes you just have to keep trying and maybe you have to try a different way me I'm all about meeting people and just like I do be liking to listen to different people's shows and stuff. And if it's a if it's a connection I feel like it's worth making, then I'll I always, you know, most times will take the initiative to make the step moving forward. But mm -hmm. like this was my first season, so it was just a lot of learning different things, you know, and like I said, learning from people that like you that I talk to or like Zion and Norm from like the all or all over uh -huh. podcast, you know, just different people, and you know, you just learn. You know? An angel, a toy, and B. Oh man, I have so many different. And ones. It's crazy when I see people like a lot of us. You know, if we come out of certain groups, like we follow a lot of the same people, right? And then it's just like so many like people I've connected with, like you haven't. It's just podcasting the field of it. The environment is so large. Like it it's is. so large, it's so many people. I actually went to a podcast and party um, last weekend here in Baltimore. I had no idea it was that many people in Baltimore that had freaking shows. <laughs> so yeah, I just you know, hey, it's it's it's, it's space for everybody for real. Well, I didn't know it was so big because. I, I just I didn't know like my my brother told me about this I was just doing it because at the time I was in Nashville so I was in Nashville for Christmas and I was just chilling there and he was like yeah bro just go ahead and start recording and put it up you know you got some things to talk about and I just I I fell in love with the art of podcasting and all the nuances that go into it but then I started noticing like there's more things behind the scenes when it comes to podcasting that can make it so much more rewarding if you just put in the time and the effort. And since then, it's just, it's not a struggle. It's an everyday enjoyable experience. Like it might be a struggle with just, you know, wanting to talk to people be like, I just want to be solo for a week or I just want to do interviews for a week. I want to mix it up, but it's always something new and exciting and I enjoy it. Um, but these groups where these, these people after people, but it seems like everybody has the same podcast. That's what really bothers me. Everybody has the same podcast. And I like to say this and please don't take offense to it. Uh, because like I said, mental health is important. So that's one thing that should never be, you know, made fun of because we all need someone to talk about our mental health. But when it comes to sports, relationships, gossip it's like everybody wants to see me talk about those three things and it's very very redundant it is and it's it, you need to find something else i ain't gonna it. lie i really <laughs> for a second i really was like do i gotta switch up what i'm talking about because like you said that at, at some point that is all you saw especially mm -hmm. with the relationships and like just other stuff that i'm not going to discuss <laughs> on my platform i'm just like maybe is this what the people want to hear but then i just realized like no like stand 10 toes down on what you feel like you want to discuss bring on the people that you feel like you can engage in um these type of conversations now i have stepped out the box more digging into like <laughs> relationships and different things but it, 
it still stays under like my theme, you know. So, mm-hmm. like you said, yeah, it is. It I definitely saw it too. But yeah, like don't. It's okay to switch up things sometimes, you know. But I can't see like me personally having a show where I just focused on like hot topics all the time. Like I'm tired of hearing about Kanye and Kim and <laughs> Tristan and all of them. Like you know, I want to talk about some other stuff. Like. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And that's why I like to come up with the topics like I do. It. It's just, it's easy because that way you can shy away from it. And you can really find out who a person is from what we're talking about. Because then there there is not this uh, level of security that they have. Like, oh, let's talk about other people's problems. No, let's talk about you and what you think when I say this is the topic. Fuck them kids. What do you think about <laughs> the kids? Do you really care? Don't you care? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, like you said earlier, like you want to deal with people that are being like their real authentic selves. Mm-hmm. And I get it. A lot of times what you see on camera is not really what you the that real person. But I feel like you'll you'll get a feel out of a person. Like cause you can listen to a person's stuff and be like, well, they dope, they dope. But as soon as you initiate that conversation, you like, nah, like you just I just get like a bad vibe and then mm-hmm. you just move away from it. But no, you you want to continue to be around like-minded and fun people, people that you can bring out their shell, they can bring you out your shell, and you can have those engaging, learning, fun conversations. Definitely, definitely. You know, so like, I- even, even times y'all may not, you know, um, agree on certain things, like... And I, I know he gonna get mad. He ain't gonna get mad. I called him out. Because, you know, Zion, I was like, look, if you drag Beyonce... Like everybody else is, we will have problems, okay? <laughs> and we had like a little, de- but that makes things fun. And we wasn't live doing that; it was just like a side conversation, you know. But mm-hmm. like I said, you draw in people, like you create, you create your own tribe, you know. That's all that matters. Yeah, and sometimes you need to pick people out that tribe that you just don't want no more. So, no <laughs> problem. <laughs> 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 Well, I ask you this one more thing. Um, so, even though, it's like, I remember we talking, you was like, I don't know if I want to come on, but what was it about you saying, okay, I'm interested in like doing your podcast? Because I know it's sarcasm, orgasm, but it's just, it's not what you think it is. It's really not. So, what got your level of interest? Yeah, I was like, listen, can we keep this appropriate? <laughs> you know, that's just that's just me like i'm not like and i hope i didn't come off like judgmental or anything like that you know it's just a comfort level of talking about stuff so what made me be like you know what cool is because i saw that all your topics are not around sorry like orgasms and sarcasm that's in everybody we all have a sarcastic side but i think that if you just look at things one way without doing your own research then you can miss out on a good opportunity. You know, it's yep. kind of like judging a book by its character. You know, and mm-hmm. the more that we had like conversation and got to know each other and things, and I just like, okay, he's cool. Like we gonna have this like minded conversation and just go from there. And then, like I said, I watched some of your other stuff, and then I did watch, you know, last night. So I was like, okay, you want someone? You want to connect with someone that's creating a safe and I'm gonna say positive environment. Yeah. But, com- but com- comfortability so mm-hmm. yeah because at first i was like mm, what are we talking about <laughs> <laughs> and that's and and when i had put it to you i was like we can talk about whatever you want everyone it's you're the guest I, and like you said i want you to feel comfortable when you come on i don't want there to be a an environment where you feel a little off to where you just don't know what's going to happen and that's what i've always tried to create that's what i continue to create and i like having guests like-minded such as yourself because if i can't if i if i'm just doing all solos then i really never build i really never expand my horizon because it's just only me talking and after a while it's almost like our listeners they get sick of one-sided conversations you need somebody else 
on that other end to really keep the flow going so um i was always i was happy when you reluctantly i want to say that in quotations when you reluctantly say yeah well i'm down to do it because it was not like i was trying to force you but i was just trying to get you to see this like just because you see the name does not mean that's what it's going to be i'm just a regular person like you i am i'm nothing special uh i just i like to have intelligent conversations i like to have open and um fun fun conversations with people who we can laugh and joke and just have a good time because that's what podcasting is really about mm -hmm. and yeah like we all have our comfortability level and like no shade to anybody that feels like they are just more fluent and open about talking about things maybe when it deals with like relationships or sexuality or whatever the case is everyone is not you know what i'm saying so i think this was like a, a learning experience for me too you know not to always assume like things are what they are like do further research and different stuff and um like i said that's what i had to do but also don't be afraid to ask those questions because you've seen i was like well, what are we talking about what's the topics give me a <laughs> you know just because at the end of the day you don't want to set yourself up to walk into a space blindsided because i've heard stories of people unfortunately that happened to them but no like i appreciate you for being kind and you know engaging so if anybody out there listening come connect with him <laughs> as well as go connect with her because she got she has a lot especially from like she said earlier she works in mental health and it even works with her having her own traumas her own triggers she can definitely relate so we all know um at the end of the day when it comes down to it we always want someone we can feel comfortable talking to her and i'm telling you when you go check out her podcast you would definitely feel comfortable that's why i reached out the way i did because not only is she emotionally intelligent but she is also physically intelligent because she is willing to see the good and the bad of things that are going on so i i completely say this honestly thank you so much for what you're doing and how you're doing it because you definitely make a change and you make a difference i appreciate that and trust me the more work i continue doing on my own self and just holding myself accountable I'm going to continue to pour that out to other people and hopefully it makes a positive impact on them. So I appreciate that. And when Chronicles of a Virgo uh, resumes, I want to have you on so we can have, you know, it may not be um, a mental healthy conversation, but, you know, it'd be. Mm -hmm. uh, we can still do mental health. I, I am open and i'm open to being challenged like i don't mind being challenged that's that's a great thing about learning when it comes from people you if someone can challenge you then it pushes your own intellect to know more seek more and do more and be better as best as you can so you should always challenge people no matter what but for the good and the betterment never challenge someone in a bad way to where they feel like they're being rude to you so if you want to have me on talk mental health fine if you want to talk relationships fine but just having me on that that's fine with me all right i'll take him take you up on that offer <laughs> hey, I'm out. if you want to talk about relationships now if i get you out of here we can i don't mind Hey, let's go for it. <laughs> okay. So um, I say this with you dealing with your own trauma and your own triggers, how has it affected you when it comes to dating? Um, in the past, very negatively. Mm -hmm. Because I made choices based upon my ego. I was a and I'm again gonna be honest, I was a very egotistic person. You know, like the the world revolved around Shakita. Like I did not, I don't want to say I didn't consider other people's feelings and emotions, but like I was just over, I had to be over everybody. And honestly, the people that I came in contact with when dating, they literally bowed at my feet for the most part, which was not oh always, gosh. yeah, it, but it wasn't always good because that just pushed a more of a, <laughs> I don't know, a condescending thought in my head that like I didn't have to do certain stuff and whatever. And um, I lived my life and dated and been in relationships like 
like that for a long time and even with my last relationship that I was in I almost was married we were engaged in everything and that was like the most serious serious relationship that I had been in however <laughs> it just did not end well it like it was a very bad breakup and that is um really what pushed me to force me to go through therapy more force me into my healing journey force me to um deal with my trauma force me to look in the mirror and be like bitch you got problems like excuse my language like no no oh yeah like God. it's like you're speaking to me because the same thing happened to me i was i was with uh i was with was, yeah, I was almost married myself. We were engaged for really, uh, four years. We were engaged for almost a year. And then it just it spiraled out of control. I remember we went like a nice little weekend getaway. We went to Vegas the whole time. From the moment we got to the turnstile, because we went from Detroit to Vegas, we were fighting. Like the only time we didn't fight was when we was on the plane because she screwed up and got us different seats and didn't want to blame me like it was my fault. But and then we got off, we wait for the Uber, she's yelling at me because I've made the mistake of the um the uh the rental car because I used a debit card instead of my credit card and I didn't know that. And then it was like <sighs> that <laughs> last year it just it screwed up and it just it put me in a bad, bad, bad place to where I moved away and I went, I got therapy. And that was like the third time in my life I got therapy that really worked. So when you saying like it really sought to get therapy, do you you deal with a negative person over and over again, whether you be a negative or it's them, it does something to you. It shows you that sometimes in a relationship, you can be the perfect person, but that perfect person that you're mixing yourself with, it don't sit right with your spirit. It really fucks with your mental. It really fucks with your energy that you just don't know. And then when you go do your own healing, you find out that you added to it and you just don't know in the mix of it. So getting, getting therapy after a tumultuous relationship can really help a lot of people. It really can. Because yeah. then the next person you get, get with, it's like you'll be a complete angel for them and they won't even know it. Just saying. I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Don't judge me. <laughs> no, no, no judgments. I, I get what you're saying. I feel like, like you said, if you are a person that does seek extra assistance that whether it's therapy or even life coaching because you have some good life coaches out here too after like a bad relationship or a breakup or something um the ball is in your corner like mm -hmm. the direction you're going to go in because some people seek these assistances for bad you know bad reasons right for me because it was a huge accountability piece and like me versus my ego it was hard and when I, you know, when I say I had a lot of mental health, like depression and stuff after that, I almost committed suicide. Like I had a, that was the first time that I had a plan drawn out. And again, I'm planning to commit suicide. Yep. I had a plan. I wrote letters. I started wow. to say my, my goodbyes and my friends and my family, they didn't know what I was doing. Um, but it didn't it didn't get carried out like i feel like god literally placed my sister at my door for a reason that particular day when i was going to do that now all the, like fast forward now to, to this year when i think about it and i talk about it i'm just like man i can't believe i was in that space that i was in and i feel like you know all that wasn't caused by my my breakup you know it was just a lot of different parts of that but moving on to like getting back into the dating, dating scene and things now like i just know i know myself <laughs> you know and i respect myself probably more than i ever have done in the past so i just I, I won't tolerate a lot of things that i have in the past i may still have that egotistic mindset a little bit you know a little bit but I'm not that toxic, controversial, as much controversial person that I was back then. Because yes. I've, I've done the healing work. Okay. So what did you learn from yourself 
now that you didn't know that? Mm. Good question. That I was problematic? (laughs) 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 And I'm going to be honest because you don't hear a lot of women being honest about the parts they played in relationships. Everybody... For the most part, some people they lead with a victim mentality, and that was me. I told you, like I was a victim to everybody and everything. Like I never did anything, even though I know I may have pushed you over the edge to make you cuss me out or like whatever. To me, no, like you shouldn't be talking to me like that. You shouldn't be coming at me like that, even though I edged it on, right? And I'm never going to make it um, excuses for the part that anybody else in my past have played. I only can stand on my own ten toes and hold myself accountable. Yes, I had some toxic traits. Yeah, I did. Um, yeah. But like the uh, the rude awakening I had was when I dug deeper into my therapy and addressed my trauma for the first time. I realized that my childhood trauma had a lot to do with the adult decisions I was making, and that was very disgusting for me because I'm like, I cannot believe that this stuff that happened to me all these years ago are still controlling me not only is the situation controlling me but the person that did these things to me still has power over me like this and after that i just had to continue to just dig deep and do the work because i did not like that person i was at all like i i didn't and i had to really work hard to change so being the version of shakita now that's continuing to grow into my higher and better self I cannot re- revolt back to the things that I used to do. I cannot let people come into my space and disrespect me and disturb my peace. Yeah, sometimes I may let you get one up, you know, only because I had to really let my pride down and know that I can't control people and I can't control situations. I have to just surrender to things and just let things be. And even if it's a person that really, um, disrespect me or get out of pocket and i may want to really just curse them out in that moment because i am human i still have human feelings and experiences i know that i'm not going to get nothing out of that so some things you have to let fly and mm-hmm. i feel like the person i was before i want to let nothing fly or oh, you want to you want to argue let's go like i'm just i don't have time for that I, I really don't. I don't know if it's coming with the healing, with age, or what. I just do not have time for it. It's probably a mixture of both because, you know, when we've done our own healing, we've done our own self reflection, or we know who we are. It's like shedding new skin. It's almost like, like you said, we're not going to deal with certain things in a terms of a level of disrespect. So if I tell you, don't, don't cross me in that way, we can be. We can be the best of friends, the best of lovers, wherever it might be. But if I say, this is my trigger, don't hit my triggers or you're going to get what you don't want. And people still push you. It's like, okay, I warned you. Like, <laughs> that's what people don't seem to understand. Everybody wants to push that envelope. But when they push the envelope, oh my God, why are you blowing up? Like, I gave you a warning. What is your problem? So it it's, it's a mixture of both. Mm-hmm. And it's problematic when people don't heed to the warning that you give them. They, they could be a big ass warning label across your forehead and say, <laughs> don't cross me in this way. And they're still going to peel it back and look behind it and see, oh, is it real? Yeah, bitch, it's real when I go off on you and then you get mad. So I hear you. I do. Yep. And like, it takes a lot of self control. Like, Ooh, like it, it, it does because like I said, I, I just believe if I have worked my way out of a lot of different like um characteristics and things that I didn't like about myself, I cannot let other people dictate my reactions, right? Because mm-hmm. I may not be able to control what you do or how you say something to me. Cause like I just can't. I only can control me. So I can control if I'm going to slap you in your face. I can control if I'm going to curse you out. But like, and don't get me wrong. Some things are warranted to that. Like, let's be real. We see it all the time. However, like, I I am more conscious now to think, like, think before I react. Because before, ooh, <laughs> I didn't think. I would just speak. And it was like, 
look, if I'm not throwing the hands and not fighting, because I'm not a fighter, you know, but I will cut you with my, my words. And I was, I know I was destroying people. Oh, I was destroying people. But again, I'm not like that no more. You know, I can't resolve back to things, but I just don't give nobody that time or power to even get me to that point. Like for what? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> you really are. And you're retreating on a lot of different levels. And I appreciate you coming, having some great candid conversations, some open conversations, and just being real. And I appreciate that. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Not a problem. Like I said, we're going to do this again. And thank you for creating um, this safe and comfortable platform. I think this was the first platform I've ever talked about, like, just relationships. So you definitely took me out of my comfort zone some. But thank you for that. You got to get out of your comfort zone. You're never going to learn. I'm God. working on it. I'm working on it. <laughs> <laughs> I know. But um, when it comes to your own comfort zone, please let the people know where and how they can find you. So I am on Instagram, Chronicles of a Virgo podcast, and I have a Facebook group, but my Facebook group is, uh, it's more of a safe, positive space. Just myself and other people just engage in um, positive conversations, uplifting and motivating people um, on a daily basis. So that's Chronicles of a Virgo podcast for right now. I think I'm going to change the name at some point. Um... Yeah, and my podcast is on all streaming sites, Amazon, Apple, Spotify, Google, everywhere. And yeah, I'm on Twitter too. So if you can find me, you can come follow me. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, Shakita. I appreciate it. Um, I, I enjoyed this. I really did because mm -hmm. I got to learn more from just talking to you uh, as opposed to listening because you only tell just a fraction of yourself because you're always speaking about something else so i appreciate this openness that you have with me um thank you so much that that uh, that means a lot i really appreciate it for sure okay well people remember you can find her everywhere at chronicles of a Virgo podcast and like she said if you can find her on twitter you can follow her but good luck because i'm still <laughs> trying to look so <laughs> So this has been another, oh, another great episode of Sarcasm Orgasm. Remember to like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Also go follow her on all her podcast platforms between wherever she might be. She's everywhere, so you'll find her. Um, and also go check this out wherever it's going to be published at. So thank you so much to my guests from Chronicle of the Podcast. This has been Will, another episode of Sarcasm Orgasm. Y'all take care, and I will talk to y'all all soon.